that uh, you shouldn't live in the past. It's dangerous. But to visit it is a, just a, a wonderful experience. I got started, uh, by, first of all, this was my first hero. In oh, baseball. well, let's back up. Let's get this here. Jack was my, my, he was. He was the bat boy for this team. I thought that was the best job in the world. I was maybe 12, 13 years old, something like that. I thought, man, I want to be the bat boy of that ball club. But I never made it. You didn't know all I had to do. I, I had no idea. All I knew is that and you were at a And the crap I had to take from guys like Pollock when you first got to defend him. All I knew was that you were at a baseball game every night, and I could think of nothing finer in the world than to be able to be at a baseball game every night. And to see it being played. Rundown of that 1941 team where you were the bat boy. Frank Keller asks and tried to figure out what is it that Jack really did. He made the statute of limitations. 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 Jesus, wash those damn socks, shine the shoes. <laughs> then I got, then they cheat you out of your jaw anyway. Oh, I have to go to Believe Me. <laughs> hey, hey, this guy owes me. This guy owes me. Some of these other duties that I had, uh, the players used to pay me sometimes. 50 cents, I think it was, every two weeks or something for washing their sweatshirts and socks and whatever you have and cleaning the shoes and that whole bit. And, uh, How did these two guys do? Did they pay you? Well, I was hoping John wouldn't be here today, but... <laughs> oh, I'll tell you one thing about him. Either you paid him or you didn't get your sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> Every now... You didn't get your stock. You didn't collect a lot of sweatshirts, too. <laughs> I, uh, Every now and then I'd have a little problem, and... Uh, I'd go to Greg Malevy and say, well, so-and-so is a little slow. So next day, the money would be right there. This is a picture of Jim Barone in 1942. Did he succeed you? My job, I, I gave him some real intensive training there that, <laughs> in 1941. He spent more time in our locker room than he did working for Ben Kerner. And, Ben's mother used to get on him something off of Jimmy, Jimmy. Oh, God, they were looking for him all day. He... What about the great Johnny Newman? What are your recollections? Uh, probably was close to me as, as any of the ball players other than, uh, than Greg Malevy, who I said, you know, he treated me like a kid. And... Uh, they used to, speaking of Greg, every once in a while they'd take me on a road trip and Greg used to have a, a favorite trick he'd pull on me. They'd, I'd be, he'd be driving the wagon and I'd be sitting in the middle and there'd be somebody else over here and I'd doze off and fall asleep and he'd slam on the brakes and toot the horn and Jesus, I'd wake up and, you know, <laughs> wonder what the hell was happening. Oh, God. But we had... A, a lot of good fun, and, and uh, the players were all good to me. I, uh, I remember one time Johnny Newman got a new baseball glove, and geez, I liked that glove. And uh, so I was playing a little bit myself, so I grabbed the glove and went out to play one day, uh, and Newman wasn't around. God, I wasn't out on that ball field 10 minutes with guys in the Muni League, and down comes Newman. And give me hell, oh, he gave me hell for, for using his brand new glove. But Jesus, I love that glove. Those, those characters around the stadium. I don't know how much uh, conversation you guys have had about baseball fans, but we had some. Oh, God. Of course, uh, yeah, I think the majority of those guys that used to sit behind first base, I think they oiled himself up down the stadium grill or Buffalo grill beforehand, you know. Claire Barstow. Oh, God, I remember that. Claire Barstow with his little cap tipped to one side and that cigar out of his mouth. 
He'd sing and dance. <laughs> Benny Bulo, the old bread man, he would oh, yeah. be out there, oh. holler, perk up out there, perk up out there, come on. <laughs> <coughs> but they had some good loyal fans, and of course, Dick Sherman, everybody remembers him. Dick was pretty good to me. Dick uh, used to take me around to some of the road games, and I'd ride with him. We'd go to Bradford. I can remember coming back from Bradford nights after a game, and you got that fog had set in, and you, you know, you'd hardly make it home. And Dick would, he, you know, he put the pedal to the metal or metal to the pedal or, but he, Dick was a nice, nice fellow. And when I. We had some big crowds down there. Hell, we just, there was nothing to have 5,000 people there. Tell us about Jake Piddler. Probably the best manager, in my estimation, who treated me the best, <coughs> was one of the most hated by the fans, and that was Jake Pittler. You know, I always liked to see Jake Pittler come to town because he was good for a couple of bucks. He, 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 give me a couple of bucks when I bring him his towels or something. He was very nice. Jack Sanford was a nice guy, but Jake was just about the best. Pat Gallagher, a little short guy. Tell me about Pat Gallagher. Little mustache. I don't think he had a tooth in his head, did he? God, he used to be back there by that ticker tape, you know. And, but Pat used to post all the scores down there. Pat's up there keeping score on the board. He, you know, gets it off the tape. So, I don't know what team it was, but they scored 11 runs in one inning. So one of these wise guys says, Pat, how can that be? How many ball players on a team? Pat says, nine. He says, how the hell can they score 11 runs? So he raced and put up nine. <laughs> <laughs> and highlights of that first year with the likes of Johnny Newman and that new ballpark. Well, people, you know, people hadn't, in, in Jamestown, hadn't seen anything like that. First of all, we had this nice, brand spanking, shiny new ballpark with outfield fences and advertising on the fences, you know, all oh, crazy. They had seen that in the big leagues, but uh, and maybe Offerman Stadium in, in Buffalo, but here we are little old Jamestown all of a sudden with a big stadium like that and see a guy like him get up and knock that ball over that field. Those people went crazy. They went crazy. You were a celebrity. Here you're seen coming off the field in 1941. It says Falcon Skipper leaves diamond after injury. Manager Greg Malavy is shown after he trudged off the diamond in the first half of the first inning of Jamestown's clash with the London Pirates. From left to right, pitcher Dick Schmidt, bat boy Jack Gallagher, and Greg Malevi. What was it like to be a celebrity? Your ego, you know, when people come up and ask you for your autograph. Oh, God. How did you feel the first time somebody asked you for your autograph? I didn't know what to do. Really. It's funny. You know, my dad had a picture of that 41 team hanging in his barber shop, and when the damn shop was sold, the picture got away from us. Oh, boy. It was the only memento I had of the, uh, of the team. Almost 60 years later, Jack, your wish is our command. It just used to pick me up at night after the games. My dad had a little, he, he had a little trouble adjusting because uh, he was a little uncomfortable with me being around there for a while because uh, I guess he didn't think his son had ever heard that kind of language and right. <laughs> all that right. stuff before, you know. But, well, it, it was all right. I, I really enjoyed it. I Thanks for the memories.